is Caleb's and he said that I could use this for you guys to just kind of show you. Um, this picture right here is eight by 10. And in case you like want to double check it, eight inches by 10 inches, exactly. Now, what I like to do is use a darker pencil. Whatever it could be. No. Let it go. All right, B, I guess we'll do. Do I need something on my desk? The reason why this is great to use on your portrait is because it's blacker than maybe an H and that graphite will now show up on your really dark photograph that I printed. So what I did when I was doing my measurements is I did by the half inch, which all of you should be doing this. So we're at five, four and a half, four, three and a half, three, all the way down. Then I made a tick mark on the other side, same thing like we did when we graded your eye. Now we're meeting these tick marks up and again, this is why I used a darker one, so it would pop up. Okay, and so on, and I'll let him finish this. Now, when you get to your paper, use a lighter pencil, use the 2H, because you're, in the end, not gonna wanna see these grid lines. You don't want the viewer to know what method you used, and also, it's not part of the assignment. Do not let these grid lines show. So as I am working, I will erase these grid lines. Okay, so what I do is I number these. So, and this should be the same as my paper. We'll see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So looks like it's gonna be right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 13, 14, 15, 16, and I'm gonna do it above as well. One, two, three, and four, and five, six, seven. Okay, same over here. Now I'm gonna do it really light because again, I don't want these numbers to show. One, two, three. reason why I have these is so like if I get lost and I'm like is the eyeball in seven and then six okay if it is there we go if I don't have these numbers as references sometimes I get messed up then you will too five six seven eight nine ten okay so now after you get it all gridded both of them gridded you just start what I always recommend is drawing the outline first, getting the line of the um, neck of the shirt, getting the arms done, getting the mouth done, the nose, the eyes, the ears, everything. Do not start shading, because what if you screw up on an eye and you want to erase it, but you've put all this work into it, do not start shading until everything's done. Then start shading, and even at that point, I still wouldn't erase grid lines. The reason why is because, for instance, is there's a shadow here, here, and here, and here, and here, but then it's lighter in this square. But if I were to erase grid lines, I wouldn't necessarily know. So the, at the very, when you are done with that square, then erase grid lines. Okay, so we're starting. Her head starts in nine. For a square, nothing in here. Second square down, there's the start of her head or the part of her head. Here we go. Now, remember that the inch square is bigger than the half inch square, which is here. So what I always reference is about halfway through this square is where her hair is. So that is where I'm gonna make her hair be in the uh, inch square. Now, I love corners because they help me so much. So from this now to this corner, it is touching this corner now in this square I know that's accurate. Now here I am going down. It's going a little bit above that corner. And now at this point, I'm not even looking at numbers because I'm on a roll. 
I usually like to have them there when I get started or when I'm at a stopping point and then I come back to it the next day. That's when I reference the numbers. All the way in this girl, she's got long hair, so it's going, her hair is almost to down here, okay? Now I'm gonna not finish that because that's just my preference. Now I'm coming over to the nine, nine eight in the eight corner of that corner of that and so on and i'd probably finish that and i'd really like to tackle this part first her face first do that first always work from left to right top to bottom if i were to work all the way to the bottom i'm now taking this and smudging this up when it's the face done, I do not want my hand dragging through that. I don't want it to mess up, nothing. So, plus this is a challenging part. A lot of people like to avoid the face, do it last. Do not do that to yourself. You will be very aggravated. Get the hard part done first. So now, this is where her hairline is, okay. This is where her face is, okay. Now the hair is slightly below. Okay, now this is where her eye is, her eyebrow, I should say. Just kind of a rough size estimate. Now, in your head, you might think that eyebrow ends here. Nope, if you're looking at this square and you're looking where it's gridded, it actually goes off the face because it is not a direct frontal view. It's slightly at an angle. So this is why, again, gridding really, really helps with this type of stuff. Okay. Now there's just a couple of different things I would like to show you as far as techniques and stuff. This is kind of the gridding part. The next thing I wanna talk about is the blending stump tissues, white gel pen. You never wanna go in with a blending stump that is this much used take the sandpaper and grind it down. Because that black, if I'm trying to shade her face, which is fairly white, that's gonna contaminate her face. So I need to get this down back to the paper. And sometimes I always have a scrap paper with me and I'll just test it. That's so pretty. Okay, pretty good. So now if I want to soften her face or soften her dress, I would use a blending stump. This is nice because it can be precise because it comes to a point. Now, all of you are going to get a gel pen. Don't go crazy with this. I know the temptation. What I would use this on in, in her, maybe the highlight of her eyes, maybe the teeth, but I would, I would avoid that. I would use the white of your paper for that. Her earring, surely this white. Okay, what's really nice about this is that you can go right on a direct dark surface and it pops up like that. Okay, and you're gonna be using this on your next project as well. Um, maybe here, maybe some white highlights going forth. Okay, another thing is for the background here, you're gonna be using a pretty dark one. Um, I don't have, it would probably be a jet black for this background and you would literally shade the entire background because that's what it is. So what's nice about having a dark background is now these white highlights of hair can stand out against that dark background. This background will be easy, but time consuming. So what I would take is shade it in, take a tissue and blend it all together so you don't see your pencil sketch marks. The sucky part about using a tissue is the fact that you're actually taking graphite off the paper. So use it to your discretion, okay? But I think there is a time and a place for it. Same thing with the blending stump. You actually are taking pigment away, but it does smooth it out, okay? Um, my finished example is over there. I did Bob Dylan. I legitimately gridded it. 
I suggest that you look at it. How did she deal with the white highlights? How did she deal with the shadows? How did she get those blacks really smooth? The tissue, that's how I did that, okay? So obviously I will be here to help you. If you're virtual, email me, ask questions. This will be slightly more t time consuming probably than your eye project. Goal in the end, it should look like your celebrity, okay? Also another thing I did is I referenced the digital image. So yes, I have this picture for proportions for everything. I get your Chromebook out, your iPad out, zoom in. What is the texture like on their skin? Okay, another thing is eraser. I use this a lot, like if I shaded her whole dress, now I could go in here and erase and get those white highlights. That's like a reduction method to where you're actually using your eraser to draw. Okay, you could do that. I would do that in her hair. I would do that on her dress, okay? And your kneaded eraser, super nice for things like this. Let's say I got her skin way too dark. I would take my kneaded eraser and kind of dab, 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 lighten it up or do a long thing so I'm not having it too textured. If you dab, 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 that's gonna get it too textured. So first gritting this, then this, I would use a smaller ruler for the smaller paper. It's a bigger ruler for your bigger paper. Then I would start drawing your person. Mainly, most likely, probably today, you will not get to drawing your person. Um, maybe you will, but you need to do gritting first. Darker pencil on here, lighter pencil on here. Half inch on here, one inch on here. Any questions? Are you sure? Any questions? Okay, all right. 